Right. Yeah. You've been ill, haven't you? Very ill. Yeah. Very, very ill. It's proper shit, innit? Like, it's horrible, innit? Do you know what? When people say they're ill, I've got no sympathy, right? But when I heard you'd got what I'd had, and your missus had it as well, I was very sympathetic because it's minging. Do you know what I mean? All the stuff you're throwing up. I had, I had a bit of blood, mate. Did you? Yeah, I was quite, you know, impressed with myself because that shows how hard I'd been coughing. I had to get up at three o'clock this morning. Right. I was coughing my fucking nuts off. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, what measurements of spoons of um, cough medicine you're doing. Yeah. But I did like 14 shots of it, I reckon. Did you? Yeah. I, I was, did myself I, a lemsip in my I, bed. I was glugging nine hours at one point. Yeah. But the dreams were weird. <laughs> like, I was, my missus said you were ranting in your sleep. I didn't get stabbed through the chest, so I can't say anything too disgusting. But she said it was gobbledygook, which is, you know. Uh, do you know what I'm sick of, though? Everyone what? going, it's not COVID, is it? No, other illnesses exist. I would have had COVID. I did a COVID test, and I was actually, like, disappointed it wasn't. So I thought, at least if it's COVID, I know what I've got, and it's COVID. And people go, oh, COVID. Where if it's flu, yeah. and I felt worse than when I had COVID, people go, you'd be all right. Bit yeah, I'm, sick, just, you'd be fine. I'm just annoyed. It's fucking, it's ending my walking. I know. Well, I'm worried about you, and I don't often say this because you look after yourself. You, you know, you're a lunatic that powers for everything. But you, I know, right? We were talking about this in the office the other day. Whatever your target is, I know you're going to do it. Yeah. Right. I know you are. That's not for me. That's not a discussion. You well, just we're behind now, like yeah. so. So you're going to make that time. We're up. doing 15k. So for anyone who doesn't know, you're doing <laughs> 10. You met. That's what I mean. You met to do 10k a day. You've had three days off because you've illness. No, I've had since uh, last time. Uh, the last time I did it was before the Everton game. Sorry, one sec. Do you mind? So, carry on. so before the Everton game, right. so I did my last 10k before the Everton game. Now, normally I've only stopped once right? and that was when I was hung over to death and I had right. to sit down five minutes and then powered through every yeah. single one of them. I've just, if it's 10 mile or 10k, yeah. I've fucking done it in one sitting. We're not even fucking about. No. Sunday, I stopped three times. <laughs> I was fucking dying, Jay. Absolutely right. dying on my ass. This is what I mean. And I've always thought the only way you're not going to, to walk is if you physically, your body goes, no. Yeah, which you did. You, which, yeah, which, and then you're going to have to make this up. Do you know what I mean? Which I've no doubt you will. If those who don't know, you're doing 10K a day for 40... 45 days. 45 There's a couple of days, days we're doing a bit more because it's 457K that I've got to do. In uh, memory of the people that we lost... Lost 457 lads in Afghanistan. Right. So I'm doing 1K for every one of them. So that's Reading why... all the names out. I have no doubt in my mind you can do it. I was only joking, my friend. It's fine. How are you? Uh, yeah, I've been ill too. Have you? But my all right, it's not all about you, Dave. But my, mine was, was so uh, rude, honestly. Fucking hell, Dave. 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 Self-inflicted, though. Why, go on. Massive hangover. Oh. It's not an illness. It, it is. is. I've been ill. I get to the point where the next might, day... Might be an illness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me and him were dying from, from severe man flu. Do you know what I mean? And it worse as well when your missus has had it, and you get it, because your sympathy's not what it should be, is it? Because they'll have it. And then still do the skill run, tidy the house. Yeah. Do like maintain. I mean, my housework just disappears. Go to work. Yeah. We'll have it and we won't move out of bed. And it's like, even the but suggestion fair, of doing something is an insult. I've, I've had, I had like Tuesday, Wednesday in bed, really. Yeah. And that was, I don't do that usually. No, you don't. This is what I mean. It's it proper. Not well, walking out. from the office to the car park yesterday winded me. Yeah. But the lift was broke this morning, so yeah. I had to walk up the stairs here this morning, and I was thinking, oh, my fucking God. But I was all right, actually, so I must be at least getting over it. So maybe this weekend I might try and it do a 10K. Well, you know. Fucking proper. I know. I've had it for 12 days, and I'm still... Like, I've got a deadline of Remembrance Day. I know. So at some point, Steve's doing 20Ks well, a are. day. I know. That's what... So what I've got, I've got... Me. I think... Um, I think I've done 106K. Right. So I've got... 250k to go uh, by Remembrance Sunday. I don't know how many days that is. It's not that many days. Ele- Remembrance Sunday is like eleven for is that the 11th of November? No, 13th. Sorry, 13th of November. Um, so what's that? That's 29, 30 days, is it? Easy. Something like that. Oh, He'll do it. Listen, it's not easy, but you know you'll do it. I think there's going to be a day where you're going to end up doing 22 and a half hours of walking, of marching during that 24 hour period. I've walked longer. I know. I know you are. <laughs> Which is what? This is what worries me. Because like we were talking about it and he's like, oh, he's missed a load of days. I'm like, he'll make it up. Have he's going to do it. Have you had a, tried that backpack on that he has? Yeah. Is this the one you had when you did the t- Manchester 10K? No, it's heavier than that. Jesus Christ. It's in the basket. It's, 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 it's not much heavier than that. It's about five pounds. We were in the office before we had the Manchester 10K. 
because we decided we were going to do it and I went, I'm going to run it anyway. I'm going to walk it with or, or, or jog it with a bloody backpack on. And we got, we met up here and I tried his backpack and I was like, I, I did like two steps and I was like, yeah, forget that. That's <laughs> like, that ain't happening. Like, and obviously he did the 10K in it. And it's funny, we were talking about this the other day, but on you have your thing, like you wear, badge that you wear or whatever you call it, this sign, which has got your number on and all that. And I was tracking in when I'd finished and it stopped. And I was thinking, there's no fucking way. I know what he's like, he's a fucking lunatic. Hard there's time. no way he stopped. The like, fucking guy patted me on the rucksack. Yeah. So I had mine on the back of my rucksack and yeah. the guy patted me on the rucksack and knocked it off. Yeah, so it went <laughs> off. Because I knew he wanted, there's no way he's not doing it. Do you know what I mean? At the finished. bridging on Deansgate, yes. which is what, 100 meters from the fucking yeah. end? Yeah. And literally, as the guy's knocked it off, it's blown in front of me and I went, excuse me, mate, is that mine? And he just ignored me. And he's ignored me. Jeez. And I'm like, now I'm not going to run off to the side and get it. But what's mad is that I found that 10K pretty fucking hard going. What's the prize? Um, but, but I'm James shitting them. I'm doing them a day at the minute. Were you, did you do any like practicing or anything before you went into that 10K? No. Because you've been building yourself up for this now, haven't you? Where that 10K was just like, I've not done anything, I'm just gonna go straight into this. With, and I think as well, sometimes the crowd helps you now, but there's also that pressure of people watching you. Do you know what I mean? So I like, started a bit fast, I think, actually, on that. Right, because you know what helped me? I didn't like, the, I didn't like <coughs> being sort of <coughs> caged in by runners, because I like to run on my own. I'm not used to running a, a crowd. So I kept sort of breaking out of the little crowd I was in. Plus you had that, there was a woman who had um, a badge on, a badge, a sign that said one minute five, uh, one hour five. So I thought, right, my target was under an hour, so I need to stay ahead of her, oh, right, okay. which helped, do you know what I mean? And an added bonus for me, I didn't know where my family were, so I didn't want to be walking at any point in case that was the bit where I bumped into them. Man, it turns out they were right at the end, which is great, because that gave me a little bit of a, a boost. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was enjoyable, that. And I'm glad me, you, Joe, Baggers, Baggers Scotty, there was a load of us that did it. Do you know what I mean? And it was good. I didn't. There was one the other day, weren't there? Half marathon. Yeah. I've never yeah, a couple I, of mates did that. <clears throat> I've, never, I've never done a half marathon, mate. Get rucksacked up and let's have it. I might do it about the rucksack. I've done, I've, I've done it around that sort of distance. An empty one. No, no. Yeah, it's full of tissue. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, mate, and then someone just grabs it and goes, I'm going to run it. That's what are the, you doing? That was annoying me, that. What? Because obviously people are running. Yeah. People are running up behind me as I'm tabbing. Yeah. And I don't know if everyone was like checking the weight of it or whatever, yeah. but people was like touching really? the back of it a lot, a lot. To the point where it was knocking me off balance. So I can't see, I'm not expecting yeah. it. It really fucking me off. Going down Chester Road, it happened 50, 60 times. Really? Yeah. See, that didn't, that didn't <clears> It was getting on my tits. Because I didn't like being close to the, the runners and that. I felt a bit like claustrophobic. The general public, you're not into the general public. I don't public, mind the general you? public. And it was nice because you saw like kids with sweets and all that. and you know, um, everyone was dishing out water. And when we got to Old Trafford, my, my cousin and our kid were there, which is good. So yeah, it motivates you, but it's a bit like, I feel like the pressure's on. Because if you're like, you know, you know, staggering about, especially for you, because people, a lot of people recognize you. Oh mate, do you know how many people stopped and took a selfie with me? Really? It was, it was about eight and nine. That's men, It's too many, that. I like it. <laughs> well, it's good though. You're into you running, aren't you? Um, I wouldn't know, not, not in the slightest. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I ran. Yeah, you're not into that? You're not bothered with it? No. I did it at the gym once, back when I used to go to the gym on the running machine, and I was like, nah. Yeah. See, running, it's a bit weird in the gym. I feel, I don't really like running in the gym. When we went on the pre-season tour, I did a few runs in the gym, and I just didn't like it. I'd rather be out and about me, down the canal. Do you know what I mean? Nice, picturesque. I've been building myself back up to run, because it's probably about 10 years since I've run any sort of major league distance. Because of the issue that I had with my calves, I couldn't. So, I and I, I had my calves done in June, and I've been since then trying to get back into, because like to get back in the army, so that's, so that's my plan is I'm yeah. trying to rejoin the army as a reserve. Hopefully March is when I can do it, and uh, I'm looking okay. I'm on, in terms of my target of where I need to be, I'm, I'm probably doing pretty well in terms of like the run scores and things like that, that I've got to get to. Um, and I think I've got half a chance of fucking making this. Um, I'm probably more than half a chance of making it on the fitness side of things, at least, anyway. Could be some other problems that <laughs> do me in, like, my eyesight, for one. But um, we'll cross that bridge. Why, right what's now. your eyesight like? Shit. Is it? Yeah. Mine's bad. I don't know if it's an age thing or whatever, but, yeah, yeah it's not. So I think I might be able to pass through, but i got to check a couple of things first. And if I fail on my eyesight, then, well, it's not... It's not your done. fault, is it? There's nothing no. you can do about that. No, do if, I, I mean? if it's the fitness, then it's in my hands, isn't it? And I think that's what I'm trying to aim for. But I've been building up the running and these 10Ks that I've been doing, I've been making the running easy. Like 
this doesn't sound like a lot, but for I haven't run prop like I said probably eight to ten years since I've like run a mile. Yeah. I've been doing four hundred meters because I get this compartment. Or I was getting compartment syndrome, yeah. and after a while, it's so fucking painful. Like you just don't do it. You just no. dis- it just discourages you from doing it. So I ran a mile last week, uh, a consistent mile. Yeah, it took me like eight minutes or something. It wasn't yeah. a quick mile. No, but like I, I was like shit about times a now. full fucking nonstop mile. Yeah. I was pretty fucking chuffed with that. Yeah. And then I, I so that was the first mile of my ten k. I ran and I ran the last mile of it as well, just because something inside my head called me a pussy for not running the last <laughs> mile of it as well. So I ran the last mile of it. That was a bit slow. I mean. It was about 11 minutes. But, but I, that, that's what I mean. Like, I, I, things like times and all, I'm, I don't care about that. I'll be honest with you. I'm not... I'm only tracking them because I've got a hit a time. Yeah. But like, I know, obviously, for the Manchester 10K, I wanted to get below an hour. But when I go running that now, I'm not bothered. I'm just... As long as I'm running. What sort of uh, percentage of people are doing it under an hour, do you reckon? What, on the... On, on the, the 10K, yeah. Uh, I reckon that's... I reckon it's about average-ish, is an hour. Because you got your pro dickheads at the start, and then... Uh, what do you do usually? You, you do 5K when you're at home? No, no, I, I, I used to do 5K, because I did that counts of 5K, you know, in lockdown. Because my mate was like, you ought to get on this, because I was thinking, I need to start running up, getting out of the house. Because elite times, you're talking 35, 40 minutes, aren't you? On a, on a 10K, yeah. That's I'm, elite runner, the time. I remember when I used to cover it for Keanu 3 on the radio. I was at the starting, uh, the starter line, and he set off, and I was chatting to my mate. And I got a phone call from the office, like, make sure you're at the finish line. I'm like, no, I'm nowhere near the fucking finish line. And like, well, the, the finishing now, the, the elite runners. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I had to run, cut through. Like, and you which, beat, so you beat him? Yeah, I, beat, I technically <laughs> beat the elite runners. <laughs> <laughs> cut through Dean's game. But I was panicking because I thought there's no excuse. I haven't got an excuse to anyone to go, oh, I've missed all the elite runners when they finished. I mean, I, didn't, I only had to interview them when they finished anyway, so I got, like, an extra 10 minutes. But, yeah, I managed to just get there in time. But you're right, 30-odd minutes, which is, like, I can do 5K in that and I'll be happy. Do you know what I mean? Like to do it in, and plus a lot of them are like they're not old, but they're past thirty. There's something in um, people doing endurance stuff. Like as a teenager, you don't want to do that shit. No. But I don't know what it is. What where your your mind changes? You're just used to the pain, likes it in some weird way. Yeah. But endurance stuff, like you don't see young people doing ultras and things. No. Like look, quite a You probably I don't know you. Well, you're bit of saying you've got army mates, but a few of my mates started like doing loads of stuff, like <clears throat> Iron Man's and stuff like that and really putting themselves through the through the, the tests. And like, I told you, you know, my mate the other week, he goes, do you want to come to, um, what are you up to? He's like, no, do you want to come to Salford Keys? He's like, get a coffee now. He's like, yeah, 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 nice one. I got there and he went, right, we're going to go for a swim. You coming? I went, where? He went, like, in the, in the Keys. And I went, mm. no. <laughs> and I went, someone drowned there the other week. He went, yeah, they won't be a good swimmer. I went, I'm not a good swimmer. And he went in there and I just sat on the side on my phone and he did a couple of laps. And I thought, he's going to come in if you want. I'm like, I'm not, I, you know what it is? And it sounds ridiculous. I thought, I'd be really embarrassed if that's how I die. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like getting fished out of the bloody Salford Keys and a load of people from Media City, you know where I am. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I used to work with them and that. I'm like, that Jay? <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing that. Like, getting pulled out of my trunks. Nah, there's, a, right. there's a coach I'm working with at the minute. Um, Commando Conditioning, he's called. Um, and he did an ultra last week. Right. I think it was a 70 miler. Is this the guy you found who's equally as nutty as you? Yeah. yeah. Like squirrel shit. Yeah. Um, well, next year he's doing one called uh, the Dragonback Race, which is the length of Wales, which I believe puts it at about 370 kilometres. <sighs> Takes you six days or so. Oh, mate. Drive it's, that. it's the mountains. So it's the peak of all the mountains. And you just think, ain't no teenagers doing this shit. It's just fucking old lunatics, isn't it? Yeah. He's in his 30s. So, I mean, my lot in the 40s. My mate, um, he, I showed you the picture, he went up Kilimanjaro, he took a glazers out, sign, well done. Oh, yeah. Stay. Um, well, Jay, as we call him. Um, but, yeah, a lot of my mates doing, like, Iron Man's and fucking Free Peaks. And you know what an Iron Man is, right? If, unless I'm getting it wrong, it's... Swimming, running, and cycling, isn't it? Do you know the distance? I can't remember. It's, it's, it's off its head. I think it's 2.4 mile swim. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is the lad who went in the canal, not in the canal, the keys. He's, he's into his iron mans. I think Cross it's it. a 2.4 mile swim, Yeah, which takes you fucking hours, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Like that, if you can swim at two mile an hour, you're rapid, I yeah. reckon. Um, I'm sure it's over an hour. Yeah, it's somewhat silly. Iron mans take a day. Like. Yeah, yeah, they do. He goes away to do him like, yeah. I think it's, it's definitely over 100. Yeah. I want to say like a 100 and... 20 mile maybe 
On a bike? Yeah, it's... it's and then a marathon, 26.2 yeah. miles. You're right, you're nailing it here. Oh, right, so 2.4 mile swim. Oh, no. Right, 112 mile bike ride. Fucking hell, I was pretty close yeah. for that one. <laughs> and, a, and a marathon, 26.2 mile run. And it can take... It usually takes between 10 and 17 hours. Do you know how shit of a friend I am as well, right? He's into all this stuff, and he did this thing where he basically, like, walked across Britain or ran across whatever it was. And it was like a 24 hour thing. And he said, I need to give him an emergency number. Like if I, if I conk out, like, so they ring someone and you come and get me, can I give you your number? Cause he said like- oh, Absolutely like, not. <laughs> well, this is the thing, best intention. So I was like, yeah, of course you can. He's like, right, he might ring you and say, you know, or, you know, or he's, he's, something's happened. Can you come and get him? Yeah, yeah, you know, I'll be on call. Got you, got you back and all this. Anyway, I fell asleep. Loads of missed calls. My other mate had to go and get him cause his ankle went at summer. And I was like, bro, I'm so sorry. I, I fucking couldn't even stay awake to, to help you to come and get you in my car, let alone do the fucking thing you were doing. So no, I tip my hat to people like yourself. And anyone I think a lot of that. those Iron Man type things is a lot to do with your support team. Yeah. Because you need to keep fueled. Like you're not, I mean, you are going balls to the wall when you're doing it, but you, you know, you're stopping, you're eating, yeah. or you're going to the toilet. Like you yeah. got to, like it's 17 hours. You can't just go, hours. yeah. I mean, and that's just the people who are finishing. I know. You got to think of the fuckers. I mean, what's the pass rate on that? There's got to be a 30, 40 percent dropout, surely. You'd think so, because it's imagine so. Go, imagine going arduous. 19, 20 hours deep. Sorry, mate. No. That's close it. the course. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be me. That three days later. What do you mean you've stopped? Dra hey. That dragon back one is about two grand to enter it, or not? Really? Because the amount of like oh. support staff, Joe, you leave your bag there, and yeah. they've got to move all that forward. They're feeding you. You, you know, think of the health and safety for people running up and down fucking mountains <laughs> for the length of a country. <laughs> the no, the tracking, country. tracking you, and all the rest of that. Sort is of he uh, ex squad of you? Yeah. yeah. Thought so. He had to be doing it. I, I reckon that the fields are eighty nine percent squaddies, aren't? When you were telling me about it, I was like, yeah, this, you know. There's one I wouldn't mind trying, which is the Marathon de Sable. Should I have a Google of that? Marathon. De Sab Sable, Sable, basically. French. But I'll do that while you do this. All right, okay. Hi. I'd like to apologize. What am I apologizing for? Just, I don't know, read. The, the All right, okay. Anyway, today's show is brought to you by Green King, which is the home of pub sport. Dave, do you got the pub? I love the you pub. You fucking right, you do. Right? <laughs> We've owned 900 sports pubs across the country. Green King is where the fans go, and they've got every single broadcast game for your club. I assume that means United. We're always on telly for the pubs. There you go. Um, get down to your nearest pub, and you can enjoy every single live sporting event from BT and Sky on tap. That's a pub thing, right? Wherever you go in the country, there will be a Green King pub near you, and you can catch this weekend's game. This weekend especially, because it's definitely on telly. And you can head to their website to find one near you. And if you download the Green King season ticket app, check this out, right? We can get you a free pint. Register, you get 10% off. You get a, a range of drinks from an hour before kickoff, during and after every single match. Green King's where it starts, where the fans go. The home of pub sport. Head to the app right now. Search for season ticket. Download the app. Uh, and the links are below for the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Um, they're in the video below. When registering, use the code. This is how you get your free pint from us. Use the code PADDOCK, all caps, P-A-D-D-O-C-K. Uh, all caps, as a listener of the show, you're going to get £5 off when you spend 15 quid on drinks. So literally, we are giving you a free pint just for watching the show and listening to our utter wibble. So Green King, code down there, as you can see, paddock, and go and get a free pint while you're watching the game if you're not going to the match this weekend. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you to Green King for sponsoring us. Um, right, the Marathon de Sablers. Yeah. French. Right. French. Moroccan. Moroccan. Okay. Yeah. A bit of French there, though, wouldn't they? Fou la Speak for Yeah. Laboratoire Garnier and all that. Right. Litres of bottled water. How many litres of bottled water do you think consumed? Loads. Fucking rate loads. Yeah. That's actually accurate. 162,000. How many volunteers do you think have to take part in this? How many runners is there? 25,000. 25,000 participants. Jesus Christ. I think this is across the, 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 right. the spectrum, though. Because I have no idea how many bottles of water you would use running a marathon in the desert. No. Uh, three? Yeah, yeah, you probably would. <laughs> you probably, yeah. Half. A sip. Um, Can you do it without drinking a bottle of water? Yeah, let's test that theory <laughs> while I'm in the desert. Uh, you remember what happened to Steve? No, me neither. He went to the Sari and never came back. Um, 600 volunteers across 50 nationalities. 
and 25,000 participants. But there is, there's, fifth, there's 35 editions of this Marathon de Sable. So it's not just one or two. There's loads. Is there a distance? I'm trying to find this now. This, yeah. So it's 250 kilometers in seven days from the April the 21st to May the 1st, 2023. And it's in the Moroccan Sahara, 28 degrees, it says here. That's all, isn't it? It's warm. It's warm. Yeah. That sounds to me, right, like the sort of thing you do, and I'm not being flippant here, but you write your will before you do it, <laughs> just in case. Do you know what I mean? You go... I think that sounds like a good old time. Yeah. I might not make it back from this. Just, just away with the voices for a few days. Make sure my missus gets all my debts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's 40 grand's worth of debts there for that. I know a lot of do it. Really? <laughs> I mean, it looks mint. And the sense of achievement on doing that must be unbelievable. And you can see, like, there's pictures here, and there's, like, they're going up. No, they're up. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see it's that? It's a proper sand dune gaff. Yeah, they're yeah. not dressed as our thought. Look, you see. Look at that. Eh? What did you think they were going to dress like? Like Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia, yeah. That's <laughs> like in a full Arab get up when they're doing it. Um, no, the... the, 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 he, the he made it. <laughs> he did. And ironically died in a, okay, uh, a mobile, a mobile crash, didn't yeah. it? In Blighty. Look at this. This is what you want. Like a little bit of help, helping each other. Yeah? Holding hands and all that. Eh? There's a... There's a Very nice. An ex-soldier just done it wearing full body armour. I mean, because you know what, like Jay, what's that we're doing? Something yeah. dead hard that people find dead hard. Yeah. Let's make it harder. Yeah. <laughs> so is it wrong that I sort of get a little bit of comfort from that? That these, like, if I want someone in my army looking after me, I want these absolute lunatics. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like when I say that like, these soldiers are off the road, I think that's good because they've got a job that entails them to do that. And they, they, you know what I mean? If they're going to gonna be like, if we're going to have a, a bunch of lunatics, let's have them working for us. That, if you're going up a sand dune with extra weight on, that's. It's going to take you three times as long, surely. Sliding down every time. This guy's got the right idea. He's just setting fire to everything. Doing a barbecue, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's had, be he's had enough. I'll have a barbecue every <laughs> every five minutes. Right, we'll have another pit stop. Look, some marshmallows. Who's with me? No? All right, fine. <laughs> um, now, that looks sick. Don't get me wrong, like, I would love to do a marathon eventually. I'm probably going to try and do one next year because yeah. um, as I'm doing this and someone just reminded me in the comments there, Scott, it's actually 350 kilometers. I saw that. I Sorry, I was meant to. <laughs> I was meant to. Um, no fucking problem. Um, so it's, it's actually 350 k that I've got left in, I believe, 28 days now. So what, what would that make it? Uh, so I've got to do 12 and a half a day now. So it's, it's up me a little bit, but no, we'll see how it goes. Um, what was I saying? Um, oh, marathons. marathons. So there's a, a guy I know called Brian Snickers. Wood, won a, a military cross out in Iraq. Uh, BBC did a film on it not so long ago called Danny Boy. It was really good. Um, what was the, the gist of the story? What was, why was it? There was a massive investigation because they was uh, accused, I believe, of shooting unarmed, or the, some people in Iraq was claiming that they were shooting unarmed people. Right. Um, but the evidence didn't stack up and it was people that had they think have been paid off to try and get compensation from the British government. All right, okay. um, but you know, these lads had gone through like the trial of the court marshals and okay. all sorts of stuff to sort of prove it. And it was a little bit about, um, I think it was called Checkpoint Danny Boy is what it was called. Yeah. Um, it, watch? Oh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Um, genuinely, genuinely really good um, documentary. Even if you're not necessarily asked about you know, the geopolitics or what everything involved, it's just, it's just good film that the BBC did. Yeah. Um, but he's doing the ultimate sacrifice marathon at the minute and he's doing I'm just doing it for Afghanistan and he's absolutely won up the shit out of me and he's doing it for Afghanistan Iraq and the Falklands so he's doing and he's doing miles instead of kilometres as well and he's doing 35 marathons in well 35 days a marathon a day for 35 days 900 and some miles he's doing 900 and some lives lost I mean and he's got a different t-shirt every day with all the names sort of I, like I admire that and I also find it completely... Lunatic. lunatic. I mean, yeah, like, he's obviously a lunatic, but fair play to him because he's doing something for a good cause. Do you know what, Jay, he's, doing, he's doing them in four hours a day as well. What's, what's he doing? Like, that's, like... What's, how, is, how is that possible? After, like... If imagine, you just like, did one marathon and did it... In 35 days or 34 days. If you can do a four-hour marathon, you're in shape, right? But if you're doing four-hour marathons when it's your ninth consecutive day of doing marathons, you're just made of some... What do you do on your 36th day? Die, probably. You, you can't just stop, surely. Do you know what I mean? Get you know, book yourself into Reckon a hospital. You can, yeah. Didn't Eddie Eddie Izzard do something? Yeah, he was. He's 
just did nothing, didn't he? And it was like, we're yeah. a marathon every Yeah, day. but like, that's even worse because at least your man there has probably got like army experience. He's a fit guy. Eddie Izzard, when you used to look at him, or her, sorry, I should say, she didn't look like someone who was was athletic. Has she asked me? I think she identifies as a woman, so I'm not trying okay. to be, you know, funny. Like, I genuinely think she's running as a, a Labour MP, as a, as a, as a, uh, a woman. Running? Nice. Yeah, you say I didn't even realise that. Um, but yeah. Just some fucking running. Exactly. Eddie is hard. What was, what, was they, what were they running for? Sheffield. No, what were they running? Oh, they they were sports running? relief. That oh, right. Yeah, I remember yeah. that, actually. So, Mental. Like, but to do go from nothing. Like, I did f- counts to 5K and was chuffed with myself, right? It took me two months and I was buzzing. Yeah. Absolute in bits when they were doing it as well. I remember yeah. the video from it, just in tatters. And Five they were not weeks four training. hour ones. No significant prior running experience. <laughs> Izzard began seven weeks of back-to-back marathon fuck? runs with Sundays off across the UK to raise money for sport relief. She ran from London to Belfast, sorry, London to Cardiff to Belfast to Edinburgh and back to London, carrying the flag of the country, England, Scotland or Wales, in which she was running. In Northern Ireland, she carried a self-designed green flag bearing the white dove. Um, 43 marathons in 51 days, covering at least 27 miles per day, totaling more than 1,100, ending on the 15th of September. Izzard received a special award at the BBC Sports Personality of the Year. Um, Fucking right. A special award. I'd want the award. shares in the BBC. <laughs> I want the BBC to become the Eddie Izzard some channel. Show insoles for your feet. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what even is that? How would you do that? No it, significant It just shows training. the fucking power of willpower. Yeah. And and also, so she's 60 now, and this was 11 years ago. Yeah. So she would have been 49 then-ish. And not in great shape at no. the time. Quite, you know, a, a bigger person, shall we say. Didn't strike me as someone you go, they look fit. Do you know what I mean? They look healthy. Like, they can run a marathon. So to do 54 or 40, whatever, in, in 50, that's really, 43 in 51 days is ridiculous. I remember watching her getting, like, ice baths every day and, like... You know the story of... Uh, you know David Goggins? Remind me that. You, I think we've spoken about Yeah, he's the Navy SEAL that's uh, become a bit of a sort of standard bearer for sort of endurance athletics and stuff. He, he kind of got a bit of popularity because he went through three Navy SEAL hell weeks in one year. Various reasons ended up... That's meant to be Like, that is what it says on a tin in it hell week. Yeah, from what I can gather... I mean, you'd probably call it a fucking holiday, but... Nah, I don't... I think <laughs> I think across all <laughs> branches of the military, I, d- I don't think anyone's downplaying what is Navy it, SEAL is, training yeah. is. Yeah. Nah, okay. Fair play. Um, I, I, I did the maths on it once because someone was like, during, um, you know, Navy SEAL recruitment, you're going to do blah, 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 blah. They're running about nine mile a day, which you go, nine mile a day when that's all you're doing all day, ain't that hard. Right. But that ain't all they're doing all day because they're getting crawled into the water and then rolled on the side. I think chafing is the problem in chafing. in um, SEAL training. I think it's deliberate. Right. Because it's horrible. It just, if you can survive, chafing's minging, right? Yeah. And you, don't, you, you could be as hard as you like. If your neck is chafing, your balls are chafing, yeah. like your shit's just, your, your, your waistband's chafing you because you've, it's wet, chapped, sandy, yeah. like no. that's quickly going to just Aggravate empty your tank, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you'll be like, what am I fucking doing? I think it's a pretty clever way of thinning the herd is the way they do it. Right. Hell week, I think they keep them up from Monday into Wednesday, I think, or Thursday. Yeah. And it's just, you get no more than 15 minutes sleep in that time. It's horrible, isn't it? I've seen, I mean, I don't, I've seen G.I. G. I don't think they're necessarily <laughs> fragging them to We've another that. level in that. Right. But I think just keeping you awake in that time, in and out of the water, fucking you about, I, th- I think he's enough. But yeah, anyway, D- David Goggins, he decided to start running ultras after Operation Red Wings, which was, have you seen Lone Survivor? Yes, yeah. with Matt Wahlberg. Yeah, so that operation, um, not just what happened to Mark Wahlberg's character, Marcus Luttrell, but it was also the helicopter that went in to go and rescue them and that got shot out of the sky. It was one of the worst days Navy SEALs had in their history, Operation Red Wing. So they, the lads that weren't on that operation decided they wanted to raise some money for all of the families. Because, you know, it's like in America, benefits stop immediately, healthcare stops, now you're in the shit, aren't you? So that's oh, yeah. not the same for the, the troops that was over there. So they wanted to just immediately try and raise some money for those families. What, your benefits stop when you leave the army in, in America? Well, if you're married to a guy that's dead, you ain't got no fucking health benefits no they more. Don't because, look at them. I don't no. they're sort of big on the military, aren't they? I don't know if that's still the case, right. but that's one of the reasons I'm why they immediately started raising it. I'm money. I'm just surprised because... So he said, well, I'm going to run this race 
And it was like, well, you can't join this race until you've done a hundred. You, I think it was the Badwater 130. I think it was a hundred and thirty mile race. Mm. So Gong is just like. I'm going to do that race. Yeah. The guy's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Hang up. He's like, no, you need to qualify for my race. And he's like, how do I qualify? He's like, you need to have done a 100-mile race before you can join my race. So then he's like, right, okay, Google's the next 100-mile race. He's won that weekend. Yeah. So he just goes and tries to do a 100-mile race. He does it after doing legs the day before in the gym. Legs in the gym the day before. Yeah. And he, he gets to, all. like, 81 miles in. He's shit all over himself. And, like, really? his, his feet have gone. He's broke both feet. And, uh... I think uh, his missus ends up having a fucking go at him. Like, I thought he was doing this for the fucking lads and this, that, and over, and just... He ends up then just fucking shuffling the remaining, like, 20 mile. He did 101 mile and then stopped. I mean, fair play to people. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 listen, I admire anyone who's doing something for a cause as well. Do you know what I mean? Which obviously is clo like yourself. Cl cause close to your heart. I can't knock it. I mean, it's fucking amazing and it's mental but fair play to you do you know what I mean and it just shows you like you were saying the, the willpower there and I think when there's an emotional thing to it as well yeah I think that do you know what I mean? massively like me I can easily give up on anything because I'm just like I can't be asked. oh you got it hurts well, yeah. like, well if you're doing it, it for it, a cause it's fucking here to hurt something to you as well you get up your pussy yeah that's why I was saying when we were talking about his thing and be able to do it I was like I don't fucking worry about him yeah, we'll do worry about him but he'll do it uh, we've got a load of chats we'll get through Wilson welcome to the academy um, thanks for your support Aditya Gautam um, who's a member of the academy for 22 months off topic lads why has no one made an effort to sign Ruben Neves he improves so many midfields is there something that we don't know do you like him yeah I do like him, yeah. Right. Why have no one bought him? There you go. Exclusive. He's been, he's been Exclusive. right. Exclusive. He's been right for someone bringing him in. Yeah. For a few years. I don't know. He's always been linked with us, hasn't he? And uh, he's been, uh, he's been 24 for, for about 10 years. He's been asking for too much money for him, maybe. Do you reckon? Yeah. But those sort of players, they're like gold dust, aren't they? That sort of DM-y type, but not quite a DM-ish. It's, it's hard because we've obviously brought in Casemiro at the moment. I know, like, things like that. Yeah. But, yeah, you think someone would snap him up. He seemed... I thought he was... Oh, apparently, according to producer Ethan, Ruben Neves is waiting for Barcelona. Good luck with that. They're in all sorts of them, trouble. Hey, they've done a Leeds in 2000, haven't they? We're going to get to the Champions League quarterfinals and all our money's geared towards that. Oh, no, we're not, actually. We might be going to the Europa League What's and that now we're again. Yeah, oh, now we're actually... Is there any more levers we can pull? Not really. We've kind of done them all. They're going to just end up selling the name of the club for the next 50 years. They're going to sell matter. Messi again. <laughs> Someone's going to be like, wait... You don't play for you. you don't, don't worry Checks about that. Checks being cash, my friend. Like, don't worry about that. Uh, let's not worry about the fine print yet. Just sign there. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Happy says, great to see you, lads. Press the like button. Up the paddock. Yes, thank you. Um, Caleb Deterler says, my dad fell victim like many others in the US Armed Service. They lose your health records somehow to avoid helping you pay for any post-service operations. It's pretty brutal, some of the things that go over in America when it comes to sort of, I mean, just general health care, but especially like if you've, you know, served and stuff here. Well, the fact that you see that. anything going on in America and the first thing that the people have to do is raise a GoFundMe to pay for the fucking operations and stuff. Sorry, why? NHS ain't perfect. No. But I've never had to pay. No. And it's like, you know, like you say, an operation that you need and you've like, got to find the money or just I got my own done privately. Did you? It cost me 50 quid a month. Right, so it's doable. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it was something I desperately wanted to get done. Yeah. And it's improved the quality of my life to do it. And 50 quid a month, like, if I'd have known this, I'd have fucking done it 10 years ago. I always thought private healthcare was hundreds. Yeah. But it's not. No, it's not. <coughs> what worries me with that, though? I'm, I know, I'm sorry. Not to be political. Not, but yeah, <laughs> not to be political. But I feel like, slowly but surely, that's the way things are going. Yeah, like, I, You I would have had to wait coming. for how long? For well, that? I went to the NHS in 2010. And they went, shut up. You I had a guy, a mate of mine that was a physio, and he's like, it sounds like compartment syndrome to me. And this is early doors Google, so there's not loads of info out there about it. Yeah. And I did a quick Google and was like, yeah, it kind of does seem like compartment yeah. syndrome. Went to the doctor, said, I think I've got compartment syndrome. He's like, all right, okay. I went to medical school for what reason? Um... <laughs> Tried his insoles. Obviously not for your bedside manner. <laughs> and he'd give me some insoles. I tried the insoles, like, these don't work. And he's like, right, are you doing your stretches? <sighs> are you drinking more? They're like, it needs an rest. operation, mate. And oh, lo and behold, 10 years later, I get the operation. I can fucking run the next week. I love that. I love the, the transfer of you, you did, yeah. Full stay fucking fast as fuck, boy. I love that. <laughs> that is my favourite ever Steve video. And there's a lot. But I like, love that. We were watching, I think it was a pre-season, wasn't it? I'm sure we were away on the preseason, so we watched. We were all cracking up, me, Joe, and Maka. Um, but no, it, I mean, I don't blame the people working in the NHS. It's not their fault. 
because they're just under strain. But I think that's it's the way it's going. In it. It? Yeah, and it's like eventually, it's like happens with the dentist already, doesn't it? Where the dentist you have to pay for certain things that you would have been would have been free a few years ago, and then you're having to pay for an operation that you obviously needed. That you know you've sort of forced the issue of, and okay, you're only paying fifty quid a month, whatever, but it's money, isn't it? You've got to pay, and it worries me because well, after you've had the operation, they give you the the cost of it. Mate, if I'd have known that, I'd have borrowed that money ten years ago and got it done. Even if I didn't have done it private, like yeah. if it, if it said it was like three grand, really. Which think for the amount I had like an MRI, I had all sorts of stuff, and the total of all like I had six or seven consultations before, and really? like for for the care that I've had and the operation and everything like that, three grand, I'd have paid this ten years ago. Yeah, if I'd have known it was an option, it just didn't know it was an option. No, it, it's a, it is sad, but I think you, know, you get to do more when you elect. To, you know, if you're paying private, people are way more open to letting you fucking mess around with whatever you want to. Well, I remember when, when we was pregnant with um, we we my missus was pregnant with my, my daughter. I think it was was it my daughter or my son. Sorry, I think it was my son. And there was a bit of a like they were worried that the baby wasn't growing, and they went, "Oh, we'll give you a scan in. Let's have a look. Nine days. Um, obviously, you're worried, and you don't want to wait nine days for a scan." So we went private and got a scan that day because you're like, you're panicking, which, you know, it's fine. He was just small. He was, there's nothing wrong with him. He was just, do you know what I mean? But it was a just in time, but it's like, right, we're just going to have to go private. And I think that's what, you know, we were fortunate that we could obviously afford to do that. And it wasn't a well, lot that's, that's it's like 70 quid or whatever. It's the thing though, well, having the choice in it though. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, if you want to wait, you can wait. And it, but if you want to pay, you can pay. That's, it's a choice. You know I mean? Yeah, it's like, have you seen how much it costs you to have a baby in America? It's like a hundred grand. Uh, you know, I've seen and how much it is to get an ambulance. What? It's like two and a half grand for an ambulance. Really? Yeah. yeah. Nah, nah, forget that. Do you know Can what I mean? Imagine. Don't ring an ambulance, get an no. Uber. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have an ambulance? That'll be nine grand. Forget that. Don't worry, I'm all right. It'll grow back. Fine. But yeah. that is what a lot of people do. They choose to. Well, it happens to people who are like and car crashing and stuff and conscious. Ambulance comes, take them to the hospital. And that was your, this is your first bill for two and a half grand. It's bad, that. Can you get lots up for not paying it? It's the number one reason people go bankrupt in America. Really? Mate, it's so scary, that, isn't it? Like you're saying, people choosing not to have that operation, choosing not to get that medical attention, or, and I mean, this happens anyway, people choosing not to have babies because you can't afford it. I mean, that happens anyway because people say, I can't afford a kid or whatever. But to the point where you literally can't afford the medical cost. Like, my, granddad, my granddad was ill last week. He ended up needing an ambulance and they took him to, I think they took him to an MRI or it might have been Salford, um, and did some scans on him. He's okay. But that's probably... I imagine with a scan and an ambulance and like you know a bit of an overnight stay, you're not. That's just cost you four or five grand. No. Guys, a pensioner. No man, it's sad. Can, can you imagine like the scenes? Like now, what? That's probably months worth of money for him just yeah. gone. And what was it? Nothing. So the choice that you're going to end up with is people go, no, don't ring an ambulance, and then you don't ring an ambulance, and that's when you know fucking catastrophic things happen. Yeah, and also you know especially with the elderly as well, they, you have to force them sometimes to ring a doctor. Oh yeah, at uh, the best of times. Oh, grandma's worse than I am with it. Yeah, I don't want to cause any trouble. I don't want to cause any fuss. Just you make me arms hanging off. It'll be fine. No, you <laughs> need to, to see fair, a doctor. I'm a little bit like that. They all kept telling me to go to the the hospital. Yeah, you're limp for three months, Dave. Yeah, is, it, is that have I got it anymore? Yeah, you are like that. You <laughs> yeah. fixed it yourself. I'll be fine. Don't need to don't need to worry about it. So what happened? Fixed itself. It fixed. You mean it just the the pain stopped hurting? Uh, there was no pain. <laughs> that was the thing. It was no pain. Just you had a limp for three months. Right, you don't limp for three months because things are going well with your body. That's usually your body telling you it's fine now, a reason. Do you know what I mean? It's like two weeks in it, yeah? Yeah. You pull a muscle, you've got a couple of weeks of, of yeah. limping and a bit of pain, right? Yeah. If it goes past five, six, seven, eight weeks, so much fucked. If he's telling you to go to doctors, Mr. Bloody Army Veteran here, who you know, bought, has to get bought, dragged to any sort of medical anymore, emergency. I've got no pain, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I'm pissing shards of glass, but I'm fine. I can get to the pub. I can get to the pub. Just uh, like, I just like to feel sometimes. Yeah, nice. it's nice <laughs> to, you know, to know below the waist there is a bit of feeling there, but it's overrated. It's fine. Uh, Sam Z uh, says, Sam Z even, uh, I don't know why I went all American then. Uh, Talking about American. My brother had minor head surgery that cost 150 grand. He had a good employer insurance. He paid, he only paid 3K out of pocket, but without employer provided insurance in the US, it is brutal Fuck and will bankrupt me. you. Seriously. I do feel for people, man. It's like if you get cancer, it's, it's hundreds of thousands. How can that cost you loads of money to... to like hey, listen, uh, listen. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the good news is you've got cancer. <laughs> the bad news is... <laughs> it, yeah, you've got to pay for the treatment. It's going to bankrupt you. 
What? The good, the good news the is... The cancer was the good news. We can treat you. Yeah, yeah, we can treat you. The bad news is... You probably got to choose not to get treated. Fucking, can you... Yeah. You how is that, the next 20 years? The bad news is, is you're going to be in debt for all that. a first world country has to make? It's horrible, isn't it? It is horrible. I mean... Why like, there's 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 got to be a better way, and it worries me that one day we're going to end up like that. Uh, anyway, I don't want to drag us into a left wing socialist discussion because Dave will start arguing with me because he's ultra right wing. Um, I'm only joking; he's not ultra; he's just right wing. Um, Dave, what are you up to this weekend other than voting? Sorry, uh, no votes coming up anytime soon. Um, <laughs> Joe, jo, who the last elected prime minister was? Um, was it? I'm gonna know this. Was was it Harold Harold Macmillan in 1962? <laughs> no, go on. Who was it? Uh, the last elected prime minister. It's got to be Boris Johnson in 2019. No, I don't think he was elected. Was he? No, no, no prime minister was elected. What? No, he Boris wasn't elected, then, was it? And then the party decided. Wasn't it was Theresa May? Anyway, no, we had a general election with Boris versus Corbyn, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, yeah but, but you don't vote for the prime minister. You no, but either way, party. I don't think it was him. I think it was. I think it was um, David Cameron was the last elected one. I think. No, I I begged I, I begged to differ. Oh, okay. I think what you're saying. Is, I saw oh, I saw something before anyway that was obviously misinformation. My bad. I mean, look, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember us having a general election in 2019 where the Tories got an 80 seat majority and it was Boris Johnson versus Jeremy Corbyn. Am I wrong here or what? Don't no. Know. Sorry. Yes, was already leader and already no, no, it's, it's, I'm wrong. Yeah, fucking hell, that, clip that up. <laughs> clip that up. That, in nine years of knowing him, that's the first time I've ever heard him say that. I want that clips up, and I want that as the pinned video on the channel forever. <laughs> fucking yeah, hell. Whatever I read before was incorrect, because it was oh. Boris Johnson and Corbyn in 2019. I remember it well. Hey. Ethan He'd only just been leader a couple of months at that point. Producer Ethan remembers it. He was marching around his school yard with vote, vote Boris placards. <laughs> hey. Isn't he on Family Guy? <laughs> what? <laughs> they did well, didn't they, Lib Dems? <laughs> Fucking hell. They've ruined it for life, though, aren't they? How many the, did they get? It says defeated. Nick defeated? No shit, they were defeated. Nick Clegg offered um, all the unis to be cheaper and stuff, and then he, he joined Cameron. Lib Dems back in well, 2010. They said no tuition fees, got into government, and that went out the window, and then they voted along with the austerity measures. Disgusting. Go on then. What can people find you other than picketing outside your local Tory um, office? <laughs> we've got a game tomorrow. Yes, who's we for the viewers? Um, Stratford Paddock FC. Good. Yeah. Um, playing Mersey Valley. No, we're not. No, we're not. Newton of the Willows. It's... Terrifying is our secretary, isn't it? No, because we're playing at the. We're playing at the you're the sec you're the club secretary, right? And you've got the fucking name of the team wrong that you're playing against. Playing Newton Willows. Are you playing Newton Willows? Yeah. Do I have to ask the manager? You can ask him. He'll agree. Are you playing Newton Willows? You got there in the end. Where's the game at? Valley Road Stadium. We've got the Valley, you see. That's where the Valley comes Costa from. Costa del Flixton. Costa del Flixton. M41 in the house. Loving that. Good stuff. Hey, I know it well. So have we won a game there, by the way? Yeah, we have. Don't ask it. Yeah, we have. We beat Polonia. Ask anyone else. You beat no, it. We drew with Polonia, though. Jesus Christ, Dave. That was a long time ago. I've Dave, had a lot of beers. This is like listening to my grandma. That was two years ago. Hey. Fucking hell. Last time we were there. You're going to have off camera discussion later. Last time we were there, we got beat. About his drinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you need to increase it. Right. So, Dave. Oh, oh sorry. Someone's. Well, so when I say someone, producer Ethan, he's moaning at us because we haven't addressed what was in the thumbnail. Jordy Maggot. Thoughts on Manchester United's crucial run of fixtures? Yeah, quite important. Quite a lot of games. Um, Big month. <laughs> what? I, I think we've covered that extensively. Listen, if you want us to fucking start talking about Man United and modern football and all that, just go and watch something else. Right, go on. What are you up to? Well, I'm managing the team. He's secretary off, obviously. Right, good. Are you feeling confident? Was for us missing about ten fucking players, yeah. Oh, here we go. He's always missing players, isn't he? It's true though. Okay. Some last minute last registrations. Minute changes. Well, we might be putting um, how old's Bill? Fifty nine. No, it's 63. It's 59 or sixty three. I can't fucking remember, right? It's one of them. I might register Bill tomorrow, and I might put him on just so I can say I put a fucking sixty, whatever the fuck he is. If you're gonna do experiments, like, can I just give me a cameo? You've got to come and watch. Remember when you used to come and commentate and have a whale of a time? Come and now, tomorrow. Now you don't even bother. What else are you gonna do? I'm, I'm, I've well, got spend to do, time with your family. Well, there's that. There's this, this channel as well I've got to do some stuff for. Um, but no, I will try and get down to a paddock game soon. I, I came to Duckingfield, wasn't it? 
It was good that because it was like around lock, lockdown time. There was Alex and uh, John Neal were there. Oh, first it, ever game. Listen, <laughs> it, right. <laughs> I, I, are, we, are they statute of limitations? Yeah, it was during lockdown and it was the day before we was legally allowed to play. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. Allegedly. <laughs> I was told otherwise. <laughs> we, so, we might have sat on a video for a week to make yeah, it look Yeah, like let's it. just weigh that. <laughs> Why is it that sunny there? <laughs> hey. yeah. What's going on here? What's, a bit of a, what's the weather like in Duckingfield? Make sure you go and check out uh, Stratford Paddock FC. Always good stuff. Check out Dave on his socials as well, man. I, I like the socials you do. You don't always look like quite positive about what's happening. Um, yeah, that. in terms of the make or break fixtures coming up for Manchester United, you can check out the watch along for the Newcastle game on Sunday. It's going to be, it's like the Sloppy Joe's King reunion here, Sloppy Joe's 2.0. So you've got Joe Smith, you've got Joe McGrath, you've got Ethan James, who's our resident Jordy. He's going to be joining him as well. Um, so make sure you check that out. You're going to be doing a post-match thing, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm at ground Sunday. Fuck, it feels like ages since I've been at the game. You going? Hmm? I went to my first game yesterday, by the way. You first, whatever? Well, this season. For this season? Do you know what? You YouTubers, <laughs> you're all the same. Do you even support United? <laughs> uh, do you really? I heard rumours that you used I'll to support. I figured out in 2018, at this, this point, yeah. in 2018, I'd done 53 games. I remember, yeah, I remember chatting to you once and it was like August and you're like, how many games have you been to? And you were like, I've been to 20 odd games. And I was like, how is that possible? There's only been about two. And you'd literally been to every level of football that United had. Now and now, it's, now, it's part -time, now you're dedicated. Part -time. I was going to say you're dedicated to him, but it doesn't sound like you even know what games you've got for him, so I don't know what you're doing with it's your time. It's been a stressful week, Jay. Hey, right, well, you're back in the ground. He's back in the ground. I'll be there as well. Uh, so make sure you're checking out Stratford Paddock, well, this channel that you're watching. Make sure you're checking it out on Sunday. The preview for the Newcastle game is up at 7 o'clock today. We've also got a Glazers documentary coming out tomorrow afternoon, so make sure you're checking that out as well. Go and check out Steve's channel, both Stratford Paddock FC and Stephen Allison TV. Go and check him out. What are you? What's your socials? Remind me. Don't worry well, about no, it. Mind, don't worry. Tell us. I won't worry about it. We want to troll you. Where's, what, where can we find you? Let's give you some abuse. Search my name, you might where find Where can it. we find your right-wing views? <laughs> hey. I, don't, I don't even post on Twitter there anymore. I've got nothing to post about. Hey, hashtag back, Liz. That's your, uh, <laughs> that's your, latest, that's your latest tweet, isn't it? Uh, you know what? I'm like, David Pritt. Um, this has been The Brew with Stephen Alson, me, Jay Moy, and David Pritt. Thanks for watching. And big thanks to Green King as well. Oh, fuck Jay.